healing the woman with the hemorrhage of blood for 12 years, was bleeding, went to the physicians. She didn't get better. As a matter of fact, went to the physicians and said she got worse. And then a 12-year-old girl who died, who Jesus raises back to life. In the gospel today, we see Jesus as the physician of the body and soul. And we see Jesus as the Savior, the Deliverer, the one who rises and resurrects from the dead those who were biologically dead. These are great miracles that our Lord performed. He did this because He wishes to restore to the fullness of life everything and everyone. And the ministry that our Lord has of healing is He gave it to the apostles. He said, Go forth, freely you have received, freely do you give. Cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead. Do all these things by my power and in my name. And so the holy saints throughout the ages have done this. We read again in the scriptures. When our Lord descended to heaven, where do we find Peter and John? That they're in the temple. And they raised the man by the beautiful gate who had laid there for 40 years paralyzed. And they say, in Jesus' name, arise, and he arises from his paralysis. You see that people would go to the temple so that the shadow, not the hand, not the verbal expression of John and Peter, but only their shadow, if it would fall over them, they would be cured. You see that Atticus raises the Paul raises Atticus, the boy who fell from the window and died back to life. You see Peter raising Tabitha back to life, the widow of Joppa. We see Peter raising Ananias, the man who was paralyzed for eight years, and saying, in the name of Jesus, arise, take up your bed. And so what Peter, James, and John, and all the apostles did, and all the saints throughout the ages, was the ministry of our Lord. Again, freely you have received, freely do you give. Cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead. And so this is what the saints have done throughout the ages, through the centuries, that Jesus Christ is a great physician and healer of souls and bodies. But his hands, his ministry, that he does things, is in his body of the church. It is those that are the holy ones that are given this vocation to do the work that our Lord himself started. And so we find in the church continually, and that's what we celebrate this Sunday, the first Sunday of November, what we call this an axis, the, the gathering of all the holy and mercenary physicians and healers. The icon only shows 18. It's innumerable, the, the saints. It's rather representative than a kind of fullness of the plentitude of all the saints that are miracle workers. These particular saints are known to the whole universal church, and that's why they're there. Saint Peter, not Saint Modesto, Cyrus and John, Saint Magdalene, and Cosmos and Domus Thalalius, and Dicius Thalalius, all these saints that they're known throughout the whole Orthodox world, but we could add other saints that are certainly uh, mercenary healers and physicians. St. Luke, the physician, Archbishop of Crimea, St. John Maxwellovich, St. John of Kronstadt, St. Agathias of the Piedes Monastery, and others from other lands that are known for their healing powers. First of all the saints, you could go to any of the saints for healing. Some saints in their life did not perform miracles of healing. St. Nicarius didn't do that. It was only at his repose that the first miracle came. St. John the Russian didn't perform healings in his life, but after his repose, numerous miracles came. St. John the Baptist never performed any healing in his lifetime. But people who invoke his name receive healings and benefits. So we can go to any and all the saints. And all those saints will respond to us. But there are particular saints that were professional as it were. One is St. Luke, the evangelist, the iconographer, and the apostle. Uh, again, a great physician, who's not mentioned today in the synaxis, but again, a physician of the church. But these particular unmercenary healers, as it were, these are those who in their lifetime were already healing people. You see on the wall the wonderful icon of Saints Cosmos and Damien. Also in the reliquary here on the extreme right on the bottom, there's particles of the bones of St. Cosmos and Damien given to this church, gifted by this church by the Holy Gregorian Monastery of Mount Athos. And we need the invocation of the 
saints who could go to St. Cosmos and Damien to venerate their, their relics there. We see the icon again, though. What do we see? We see that Cosmos and Damien, they have a little box. And then there's a spoon there. And then the boxes are what? Are kind of medicines. Certain kind of medicines they used in that day and age. To do what? To heal people. They were doctors. They healed people. And so they used the scientific methods of those days, whatever they were, to restore people to well-being. But they just didn't do this. But they did everything in their ministry as all health care people should do. Doctors, <coughs> nurses, uh, those in the curative disciplines, whatever it is, that everything should be done in the name of Jesus, for the glory of Jesus. That if anyone is healed, if anyone is restored to well-being, it's through the grace of God. It's according to the measure of God's good will for that person. And so we invoke the holy saints. The saints Cosmos and Damien, they would use the medicines, and sometimes they wouldn't use the medicines. Sometimes they would just say two words, Jesus heals. And those two words, the person would receive sight, be in blind. They'd be able to walk over lame. That they receive the benefits just from the words, Jesus heals. As in the scripture, Peter said, arise in the name of Jesus. Everything is in the name of Jesus. All healing is in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the one who wants to restore us to well-being, so that there is nothing like sickness, suffering, or sorrow. But life everlasting, life everlasting is the abundance of life, the fullness of life. And so, our Holy Mother of the Church says, have doctors as your friends. We're not talking about Dr. Schwartz or Dr. Papadopoulos. We're talking about St. Pantelaine, and St. Cyrus and John, and St. Luke of Crimea, and, and other holy saints that we could go to, not only in time of sickness for ourselves, but also we know others that are suffering, others that have afflictions, psychological, emotional, uh, physical diseases, spiritual maladies, that we go to the saints and we entreat them for the benefit of others. Sometimes we hear somebody sick and we say, oh, it's awful. The Lord bless them and help them. But we should be fervent in our prayer for them. St. John of Kronstadt was a great healer. He lived at the beginning of the, the uh, 19th century. He died 1908, a great Russian priest in the city of Kronstadt, near St. Petersburg. And he would heal people just by reading a telegram. A telegram would be sent to him. And he would read the name in the First Committee of the Divine Liturgy, and that person, thousands of miles away, would be healed. He would touch them with oil. He would have them go to the Holy Communion. He would send them to the shrines of the relics. And St. John of Kronstadt was known. Thousands and thousands of people would come to the Divine Liturgy at St. Andrew's Cathedral every Sunday because of his healing powers. And people were healed instantly, but not all the time. There was one time, St. John writes about, that there were two girls, two twin girls that were born, Olga and her sister, which is her name I don't remember. But they were so sick that St. John of Kronstadt would go to their house with the parents and pray for these girls. <laughs> and he visited them and prayed. And St. John was wondering, Lord, nothing's happening here. You always hear my prayer, and, and healings are given. But there's no benefit for these two girls here. It's pitiful. And so St. John increased his prayer. But it was only on the 11th visit, the 11th visit to the house, that instantly they were cured. But it took 11 visits of St. John of Kronstadt. Such was the will of God. What can we learn from that? Well, to be persistent in prayer. Not for ourselves so much, but certainly for others, others that are in need, to continue in the prayer for them. For what? For their healing. Not necessarily for their cure. If they're to be cured, that's God's business. If they're to be healed, it's certainly God's business. Sometimes God cures people. That's what we call a miracle. A miracle is when there's a particular disease, malady, affliction, whatever, and miraculously they're healed, like the woman in today's gospel. She was healed. It's a miracle. It was a cure. But we don't pray for cures. We pray for healing. And healing is holistic. In other words, we ask God 
to grant to this person what is needful for them in body and soul and mind. And it's up to the Lord to do what he knows is best for that person. We have an account in one of the Gospels that there's a paralytic and he comes into the house of Capernaum where we're staying and they take the roof of the, of the house off and they lower four men uh, with ropes, lower the paralytic in front of the Lord. And the Lord sees the paralytic and what does he say? He says, son, your sins are forgiven. And everybody's marvel. Well, who is he to forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. But God, Jesus Christ, knowing their thoughts, he says, he says, arise and take up your pallet and go home. And this was to show that if he had power to forgive sins, that this example, this sign as it were, of curing the outward illness showed that he had the power to cure the inner illness. When our Lord saw the paralyzed man, he knew he was paralyzed, an awful thing. But he knew he was paralyzed more than the soul. And so the Lord gives a healing where he needs it most. It's in the soul. That's where the health comes. Another example we find in the Gospel of the, the man that been paralyzed at the pool of Bethesda. That our Lord cures him. The third kid years he's lying there. But what does our Lord say to him after he's healed? He says, go forth and sin no more. Lest something worse come upon you. Well, what could be worse than 38 years of paralysis? But our Lord obviously knew that this paralysis of 38 years, that this man was sinful somehow. And so our Lord warns him that he thought this was bad, paralysis of 38 years. Something worse will come if you don't stop sinning. And so, again, in the life of St. Montalene, in the Chopar and the St. Montalene, what do we sing? The Holy Great Martyr and Healer Montalene, pray unto our merciful God that he will not heal our souls or bodies. It doesn't say that. That he will grant unto our souls remission of our sins, taking our sins away. So what is health? Mean? Health first is that of the, the soul. The well-being of the soul. And our Lord desires that. And he desires our bodies to be healthy. But to be sure, everyone that is cured, the daughter of Jairus, she will die again. The woman with the hemorrhage, she will die again. Even Lazarus, who was dead four days and raised to newness of life, he died again. That anything that is cured in this life, biological life, is temporary. But what is given is a seed of immortality. The seed of an indestructible health is given to the soul. And it's even manifest in the lives of some of the saints. How is that? Because even when they die biologically, their bodies don't decay. That they remain incorrupt, like the body of St. Spiridon, who we celebrate as one of the saints today of the mercenaries. Or the body of St. John Maximovich and the other saints. That even their body, God will not allow to decay. Why? Because already help was given to the physical aspect of the human being. And the relics were there and remained so that we could go to them. And through their intercession, we were closer to God. On this feast of the holy and mercenaries, let us have in our directory the holy doctors. When we go to a hospital and visit someone, as we enter the hospital door, let us pray, our holy mercenaries, Cosmos and Damien, Bring healing and well-being to all those that lie here in, especially to so-and-so who I'm going to visit. And when we leave the hospital, say the same thing. We do the same on the lane, whoever. Have your doctors as your friends. And you treat them. And when there's an illness or something, then go to the Holy Saints. When you take your medicines in the morning, as one of the elders of Russia says, you never just take a medicine. But you cross yourself before you take a medicine. And you ask the Lord, to grant healing to the measure of his good will for us. We do things and we don't think of things. Sometimes we say that when somebody says, all we can do now is pray for them. Well, that's the first thing that we do is pray for them. It's what we continually do for them. Same thing when we go to a nursing home or when we hear that somebody is ill. To pray to our Lord as a physician of souls and bodies. To grant them healing according to the measure of his good will for them. And we ourselves are called to be instruments of healing. We are all ourselves called to be 
physicians in the circus such to be healers. And how are we healers? First of all, by being healed ourselves. Physician heal thyself, as it says in the scripture. We have to be healed and we have to be healthy ourselves. And if we are healthy of soul, not necessarily of body. There are many saints, St. Patrona of, of, of Moscow and other saints, who were sickly all their lives. But they had spiritual vision and they were able to help others. Why? Because their soul was healthy. If our soul is healthy, then we're able to give the right word to others. We're able to help others in other ways because the Lord uses us to say the right things, to be a consolation, a comfort, a sense of strength and well-being for others. So we want to be people that are healthy. And of course, we're not as healthy as we should be. That's why we go to the Holy Saints. We do very well to have these Holy Saints, the mercenary healers and physicians, as our doctors, as those whom we entrust our well-being to. And again, the better health is not to, the better thing is not to go to the doctor out of necessity and urgent need. The better thing is to have preventative medicine, as it were, to make sure that we're in good health so we don't have the afflictions and the maladies and the illnesses. Well, we might have that in the body because that happens to everyone. Even the great saints had that. Even the great saints had sickness and suffering. St. Mark of Ephesus, the great defender of orthodoxy, for 14 years he battled a, a terrible cancer of the stomach. St. John of Kronstadt, he had sickness. St. Porphyrus and St. Hyacius, they had sickness, and yet they were able to do so much for other people. So the physical illness and sickness that comes upon us is part of our fallen human nature. We have to deal with it. And we have to see that this is how we are. No one is healthy. When we die, we die either of sickness or we die of trauma. No one dies healthy. And that's the condition we live in. But the soul, our soul, can be pure. It can be healthy. It can be bright. And it can give to the body the strength, the wisdom that the body needs to function until our repose and our resurrection in glory. Let us not hesitate to be people of prayer for those that are sick and suffering. And let us also understand that we ourselves are sick and suffering. And let us thank God for the holy saints that as the shadow of John and Peter cured, and the words, Jesus heals, that the same thing will be given to us, at least in our soul, the perfection of healing, and to the body, the cure that is needed according to the measure of his will.